if you look at your periodic table, we've really got three huge groups of stuff on our periodic table. You have your metals. Metals are everything that is marked here in white. If you notice, most of the periodic table is metals. Over here, you got your non-metals. That's in the pale yellow. Your non-metals are generally to the right of this blue staircase, except for this lonely element over here, and you might remember that's hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen hangs out on its own over in group one, not because it's a metal, but because it has um, similar reactivity values or traits. And over here in the blue, we have the metalloids. Okay, we're gonna talk about each of these. First up, metals. Metals, every single one of them are solids at room temperature, aside from mercury, good old H. G, remember that one, which is a liquid at room temperature. The most reactive metals that we have are in groups one and two on the periodic table. Groups one and two are the single most reactive on the periodic table in terms of metals. We have similarly reactive non-metals, but right now we're talking about metals. So group one, bang, group two, highly reactive. In fact, if you were looking at sodium and you wanted to go out and mine sodium, you would not be able to do it because sodium does not exist on its own in nature because it is so darn reactive, it has got to attach itself to something else at all times, no exceptions, okay? So let's talk about some specific properties of metals. Number one, metals conduct. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. Conduction, okay? We're talking about being able to move something. We're conducting something like a train conductor conducts the train. Actually, I guess it would be better to call it good engines because the engine actually moves it, but you know, conductors, there we go. They move heat and energy in terms of electricity. This is because they have mobile valence electrons. Mobile valence electrons. Mobile what? Valence electrons. Okay, that's going to be super important. One of the reasons why metals have, actually the main reason the metals have the physical properties that they do is because of these valence electrons that can move. They are malleable, which means they can be hammered into a shape. If you take a piece of metal and you whack on it with a hammer, it's not going to shatter. It's going to move. It's going to physically spread out. That is malleability. That's also because it's sharing mobile valence electrons. I shouldn't have said the word share. Share sounds like a covalent bond, but bear with me. They have mobile electrons. Metals are also ductile, okay? They can be drawn or pulled into a wire. This is where all those wires in your house that carry the electricity because, you know, they conduct come from. Okay, here's some more properties of metals. Metals have luster. This means that they are shiny. Now, not all metals have the same type of shine. They don't all have the same degree of shine. If you take iron and you rust it, you're not actually looking at the iron, that red stuff. No, that's iron oxide. The iron oxide isn't shiny, but the iron itself is. Same thing with the Statue of Liberty. You look at the Statue of Liberty, what's she covered in? Copper. You got verdigris on the surface, that's that green stuff. That is copper oxide. That is not the copper. The copper itself is shiny. Metals have a very low ionization energy. This means that they lose electrons very easily. Lose electrons. Remember, low ionization energy means that electrons are being lost without having to use much energy to pull them away. First ionization energy, defined as the amount of energy it takes to pull off an atom's most loosely bound valence electrons. Metals have such low ionization energy that some of them practically give their electrons away. They also have low electronegativity. Now electronegativity isn't something we've really talked about. Electronegativity is the attraction that one element has or one atom has 
for another atom's electrons. How hard are they pulling on another atom's electrons in a bond? Metals have hardly any pull to them, which means they also will lose their own electrons easily because it's all about kind of a tug of war between the two atoms in a bond, which one gets the electrons. You know, non-metals tend to be kind of like, you know, a linebacker, and metals are kind of like, I don't know, a baby. Who's going to win that tug of war? It's the linebacker, not the baby. What does this mean about a metal and its electrons? It means that a metal is going to lose its electrons easily. Okay? Means that it will form what? If it's losing electrons, it's going to become a positive ion or a negative ion. It's going to become a positive ion. It forms cations. Don't forget it. 